Are you learning cello through Essential Elements Book 2? Then this is the video for you. Today we'll be going over number 28, which is Rigadoon. Hi, my name is Liz from Cellomoji.com and I give you tips and tools so that you can learn to play the cello. So today we'll be going over Rigadoon, which is by Henry Purcell. Now, if you are studying Suzuki Cello Book Number 1, you may wonder if the Rigadoon in there is the same as the Rigadoon in here. And short answer to that is yes, but the reason why I'm playing through this version is it's actually written in a different key, so the notes in here are a little bit different. Plus the Rigadoon in this Essential Elements Book 2 is a shorter version than the one that is found in Suzuki Cello Book 1. But if you have Suzuki Cello Book 1, I encourage you to give the Rigadoon in there a try because you are essentially playing the same rhythms uh, and even though the notes are a little bit different, uh, you'll have an easier time learning that one in there. But for now, let's concentrate on the Rigadoon that we can find here in Essential Elements Book 2. If you notice, the key is D major because it has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. So let's go ahead and play the D major one octave scale. The time signature here is 4-4. Four, four. Now remember, the top number means how many beats there are in a measure, and the bottom number means what type of beat it is we're counting. So in the case of 4-4, four, four, that means there are four quarter notes in every measure. The other thing to remember is when you see a dotted half note, which happens a couple times in this rigadoon, you want to remember that takes the place of three quarter note beats of the measure. So make sure that when you are playing through this song that you're really counting one, two, three, which represent the quarter notes that you're holding out. Otherwise, if you're just sort of approximating it or kind of sort of feeling it out, there's a high chance that it won't be super consistent. Now, a common thing that I hear, especially for long notes, is that, well, I'm running out of bow, so I'm just gonna change my bow because I ran out of bow. Remember, if you're running out of bow, just move your bow slower, right? These longer notes take more time and more of your bow. So if you find that you're running out of your bow, that just means that you have to move it slower so that you can hold out these long notes. There isn't really a big dynamic difference between line one and line two, but I really encourage you to practice making a bigger difference just so that you know, like, okay, the first line is not as loud, but the second line is louder, and you practice that, that's giving you more tools in your toolbox of how to use your bow. Plus you see the hairpin at the end of line one that's indicating they want you to grow in sound across that measure. So use that as a really good practice and also as a reminder that the second line is going to be louder than the first. All right, there's not much else to talk about here, so I'll be playing through once with the accompaniment provided by Essential Elements Interactive. Remember, you can always access the accompaniment yourself and play along with a metronome beat as well as other various combinations when you access the Essential Elements Interactive site. All right, here we go. So there was number 28, Rigadoon by Henry Purcell. If there are any questions that I haven't answered in this video, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you are loving all these Essential Elements tutorial, I would love for you to hit that thumbs up button and also the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any other future Chelemoji videos. Check out the videos on your screen right now for some other Essential Elements tutorials as well as some other videos that could be fun to watch during your cello journey. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.